Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One where we talk about the basics of using SketchUp. Today we're going to carry on with our axis inferencing. So we've been talking about how to use axis locks and inference locks to draw things. I wanted to touch briefly on using a couple of modify commands with those inference locks. So a lot of the modification commands don't actually tie into inference locking at all. Uh, things like scale or uh, push-pull. Push-pull is only one direction it goes and that's normal to the surface so you can't tell it to follow an axis while you're push-pulling. Um, but two of them specifically, that being move and rotate, do completely acknowledge those inference locks. So we're going to take a look at how to use move and rotate with inferencing. Let's check it out. Okay, so I just drew a couple things here on the ground some examples. Uh, I have a line uh, surface. Here I have some some faces and lines and edge, edges and faces is what I should be saying uh, that we're going to use to move around. And over here this is a group uh, just because I want to talk about moving groups. It's a little bit different from moving raw geometry. So if we come back over here I'm going to start by picking this line and I'm going to click the move command. So now normally when you move you're going to select the geometry, then pick a from and a to location. So I'm going to grab this by the end, my from location. Now I'm moving it. Just like we did in the move video, nothing special there. But if I start hitting my arrow keys, I will start locking to axes. So if I hit the left arrow key, I'll line to the green axis, which is the, actually the direction that this piece is currently facing. If I hit the right arrow key, it'll go perpendicular to this edge because I'm sliding along the red axis. And then of course the up arrow will take me vertically. Pretty simple. And this is a good way to move. Like if, if it's, it's kind of funny, but, but this is something that people struggle with all the time where oh, I just want to move it to a certain location. Sometimes what you might want to do, if, you're, if your geometry is busy enough and you're having a hard time moving it from one location to another, you might want to do a couple moves where one is a move horizontally, one's a move vertically, something like that. Use your arrow or your arrow keys and your axis locks to move stuff one step at a time when you need to. All right, I'm going to turn that off so now I'm moving anywhere again. Now let's say I want to move this line along a line parallel to this. So maybe there's this is the distance it's supposed to be away from this line, but I want to move it along that line, something like that. If I click come over here and I'm not clicking at all, just hover on the edge for just a second. When I pull my line back over as soon as I hit what is parallel to that edge. See how it picks it up? So if I hold down the shift key right now, it will actually stay locked on that axis. That's that's not fun holding down that to, to keep on there. So if I tap the, the down key on my keyboard one time, now I'm locked to parallel to that line. So I'm moving it straight along right parallel to that highlighted line. If I hit the down arrow a second time, now I'm moving perpendicular to that highlighted line. So you see the geometry you move doesn't have to be connected. This line is not, doesn't actually have anything to do with this face or its edges, but by using those inference locks, I can use that geometry to move other geometry around. Pretty nice. Same thing goes, of course, I'm using one piece right here. I can come over here, select these four edges and this face. And when I come over here to move, same thing. I hit my arrow keys. I can lock that. This Anything that we're doing here applies not just to one piece of geometry, but any amount of geometry. So how is this useful? How, how do I use this kind of thing? Well, here's a big one. This is how we could use that move uh, example. So right here. I'm going to pick this line right here and maybe I want to make this look kind of like a house. I want to put like what looks like a pitched roof. I want to pull this up. What I can do is I can click on move and I can pick this line and I can move it up. Now see what happens here is I'm, as I'm moving up I'm kind of wobbling back and forth and I want to make sure I go straight up. This is a perfect spot to just hit my up arrow key and now I know as I slide up I'm always moving straight up. So this midpoint that I grabbed is going to be midpoint line when I click. All right, pretty simple. Move is a great way to use inference locking. But like I said, there's other commands. There's also 
rotate. So I'm going to use rotate. So let's go back, deselect everything. I'll start real simple. We'll grab this line right here and I will rotate it. Notice when I come in, the compass, that's the big circle-y shape on my cursor right now, is locked to blue. The compass will automatically lock to the axis that, well, initially, I should say, it will initially lock to the axis that you are most readily seeing in your viewport. So if I flip around to this side, it's gonna be red, swivel around to here, it's green. If I'm looking down on my drawing, it's gonna be blue. So it tries to guess right off the bat. So when I come down here, click on this point, click, I'm gonna grab it. I'm, I'm automatically on the blue. If I wanted to lock that, so for whatever reason, I wanna rotate it around on the blue, but I wanna do it from this view over here. That's where the inference locking comes in. If I hit the up arrow, it locks the blue. So now I can still spin it around on the ground, even though I'm in a view that doesn't really maybe jive with that. Same thing over here. I'm gonna go ahead and triple click this little house we created. I'm gonna rotate. And I'm, notice that when I hover over a surface, so even though I'm in, looking down on it mostly from above, when I hover over a surface, it automatically locks. Likewise, if I want to rotate from this point, but I wanna rotate on the red axis instead, I can just tap that right arrow key, left arrow key, up arrow key, to force the axis that I'm on. I'm gonna go ahead and go on the green axis and I'm just gonna tip it down like this. All right, now here's what I wanna show you. When I come in here, like I said, I have my standard axes here, my green, red, blue, and I can get to those by hitting the arrow keys. If I hover over a surface that is off axes, like this one right here, this surface right here is tilted some degree, it will jump to that face. If I come off it, it's gonna jump back to whatever my, my initial axes are. So if I wanna rotate something, I wanna rotate this model perpendicular to this axis right here, all I have to do is hold down shift and see that it turns magenta. While that's highlighted, I could come click right here and once I release, now I know I'm actually rotating that perpendicular to that face. So again, that's how you can use your arrow keys and your shift key to lock to those. Like I was saying, I did draw a group in here too because I wanted to show you how this works. Um, same thing, if I select it and I click move, when I go to move this, whatever spot I grab, if I grab by geometry on there or I do a relative point off of it, I can just hit my arrow keys to toggle between my axes that I want to move this. Again, same goes for rotate. When I click rotate, I can come in here and I can say, okay, I want to rotate it on this axis. No, I want to be on green, so I'm going to hit the left arrow. Or, watch this. So even though this is, is highlighted right now, I could come over here, hover over this surface, hold down shift, and now come grab a point. And now, this is crazy, I'm rotating perpendicular to this surface over here, but I'm spinning this cube. I know, that's gotta, my brain's gotta process what exactly I just did right there. But this is the kind of stuff that comes into play if you're doing complex geometry, I'm doing uh, roof geometry, I'm, I'm putting pieces on top of there, rotating shingles on top of geometry, that kind of stuff. Inferencing other surfaces is extremely important when you're rotating that geometry. And the arrow keys and shift let you do that while editing with move or with rotate. That is most of what I can think of for inference locking. That's three videos and that feels pretty good. I, I feel like we covered just about everything. Um, if I miss something, if there's a way you use inferencing that I didn't touch on in any of the last three videos, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like down below. And if you don't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave a comment. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.